Since time immemorial, livestock have been an integral part of human life. Livestock rearing is a major social capital and the backbone for livelihoods of rural poor. They provide milk, eggs, meat, and other byproducts which are associated with either human nutrition or our day to day life. They act as source of draft power for agricultural operations or transportation purposes. The demand for livestock products has increased in recent years as a result of urbanization and increased per capita income. As it is not possible to increase the number of animals due to shortage of feed and fodder resources, there is an immediate need to enhance productivity. Feed constitute about 60 to 70 percent of cost of production. There is a sharp decline in quality feed resources in our country. In addition, we are facing a deficit in fodder production. Our grazing lands are also shrinking. This demands development of technologies in animal nutrition and physiology which are suitable and feasible for Indian livestock farmers and enhancement of livestock productivity. To meet these challenges, the National Institute of Animal Nutrition and Physiology, popularly known as NIANP, was established by the Indian Council of Agricultural Research in 1995 at Bengaluru. I welcome you to NIANP. This institute has been established to conduct fundamental studies on basic nutritional and physiological problems related to biophysical translation of nutrients for productive functions in livestock. The institute has established state-of-the-art infrastructure with sophisticated modern equipment, highly trained and dedicated scientific manpower. To address the mandate and objectives, the institute has four divisions. Animal Nutrition Division, Animal Physiology Division, Bioenergetics and Environmental Sciences Division and Economic Statistics and Extension Division. The administration other sections, units and cells support these activities. The Institute Management Committee and the Institute Research Advisory Committee provide guidance on institute management and research. Research and related activities are being coordinated by the PME cell, that is, the Project Monitoring and Evaluation Cell of the Institute. Institute Technology Management Unit, ITMU, coordinates intellectual property rights and patent issues. The Feed Analysis Laboratory is mainly involved in research on feed quality control and its safety. We have developed a database on feed and fodder resources of the country which is highly useful for the policy makers and planners. The information is available for its users both in digital and printed forms. At present, work is underway for creating a portal on Indian feeds and feed safety aspects. Strategic supplementation of most limiting macronutrients like protein, energy from locally available feed resources were developed for enhancing the livestock production under field conditions. Work on synchronization of rumen fermentation for maximizing microbial protein synthesis is under progress. Work in the fermentation technology laboratory employing solid state fermentation is in progress on production of lignolytic enzymes for pre-treating crop residues prior to feeding 
or for oral dosing of animals to enhance their digestibility. Work on enhancing the conjugated linolenic acid production in rumen and development of nucleic acid-based probes for better understanding of rumen ecosystem is being carried out. The Micronutrient Laboratory has catalogued various feeds and fodders based on their mineral content. The entire state of Karnataka has been mapped according to region-specific mineral deficiencies. We have developed area-specific mineral mixture for different agroclimatic zones of Karnataka and it is commercialized through Karnataka Milk Federation. The laboratory has developed sensitive biochemical markers for precise assessment of trace mineral status in livestock. The Nutraceuticals and Feed Additives Laboratory of the Institute conducts research on supplementation of non-nutritive substances, the pre- and probiotics, for improving the efficiency of nutrient utilization. Entric methane from ruminants is a burning issue in the scenario of global climate change. Under the outreach program, we are in the development of a national database on Indian ruminants under different feeding regimes. Toxicology Laboratory is engaged in research on toxic contaminants and anti-nutritional elements in feed resources. Work is being done on identification of plant products that could inhibit the growth of aflatoxin-producing fungi in poultry feed and neutralizing their toxic effect. Results so far indicate that oils of black pepper, hing and lemongrass have potent antifungal property against Aspergillus parasiticus in poultry feed. At NIANP, it is a constant endeavor to explore the use of agricultural byproducts as non-conventional animal feed after detoxification. Investigations are underway in Stress Physiology Laboratory on identification of biomarkers to assess stress and animals' response as well as measures to alleviate effects of stress. The studies show that feeding of vitamin C and potassium chloride reduces effects of heat stress in poultry. In another ongoing study, Feeding of garlic to commercial layer birds has shown increase in egg production up to 2% by minimizing stress. In addition, it also lowered the cholesterol content of the egg. Investigations are in progress in Animal Physiology Division to understand the mechanism and time frame of events as well as nutrition endocrine interactions in attainment of puberty in buffalo. Initial observations indicate that providing up to 20% extra energy in the feed during growth phase of the calf may lead to early attainment of puberty. The Molecular Biology Laboratory is investigating into the biochemical environment in the reproductive tract of buffalo during estrus cycle and around the time of establishment of pregnancy. This study could eventually lead us to understand the cause and find strategies to reduce the incidence of early embryonic mortality in buffaloes. Early and reliable diagnosis is essential for pregnancy detection and identifying early embryonic mortality among buffaloes. The Institute is presently targeting some pregnancy-specific molecules in developing a pregnancy diagnosis kit 
for field conditions. The role of various modulators, including fatty acids, to increase endogenous levels of the prostaglandin PGE2 is also being investigated. Modulating this hormone secretion may reduce the incidence of early embryonic mortality. A newer combination test for semen analysis incorporating the functional membrane and the acrosomal integrities of the sperm has been developed by the scientists of Reproductive Physiology Laboratory to identify the subfertile bulls. A field study has been initiated for evaluation before the test is released for use in semen banks. The reasons for very high apoptotic rate in the ovarian follicles of the buffalo and deficiencies in the corpus luteum function are also being investigated. Oocytes and the follicular fluid required for the investigation are retrieved from live animals through ultrasound guided ovum pickup and follicular fluid aspiration. The Animal Reproductive Biotechnology Laboratory has been working on developing techniques for buffalo embryo resource generation. Generally speaking, a buffalo, during its lifetime, may give birth to six or seven calves. Rest of the eggs in the ovary get wasted. For the first time, the institute has achieved in vitro fertilization of the oocyte retrieved from laboratory-grown buffalo preantral follicles. A study has shown that exposure to high level of heavy metals and pesticides have harmful effects on oocyte and embryo development in vitro. The radioisotope and endocrinology laboratory has infrastructure to handle radioisotopes as per regulations of the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board and to carry out radioimmunoassay of many proteins and steroid hormones, especially of reproductive importance. By modulating prolactin hormone levels, we have achieved a 4 to 5 percent increase in egg production in white leg horn and also in Giriraja birds. A study on the effects of different wavelengths of light on egg production has shown that red and blue color lights have better effect than incandescent light in improving egg production. Molting improves egg production in birds. Calcium metabolic studies along with proteomics of the eggshell and shell membrane are being carried out to understand the biophysical translation which may help to improve eggshell quality. The institute also coordinates research on improvement of feed resources and nutrient utilization through the All India Coordinated Research Project along with 22 centers including state agriculture universities and veterinary universities, sister institutes of ICAR and NGOs across the country. The institute has strong linkages with other scientific organizations. There are several research projects funded by DBT, NAIP, NFBSRA, network and outreach programs of ICAR. Feed analysis, analysis of micronutrients, estimation of aflatoxins, hormone assay, and several other services are being offered by the Institute. Expertise of scientists of NIANP is extended to the clients through consultancy and contract research. The fully equipped experimental livestock unit facilitates the feeding trials in cattle, buffaloes, sheep and poultry for research work.
a well-established fodder production unit with infrastructure for all farm operations supplies green fodder to these animals throughout the year. The Agriculture Research Information System cell, ARIS cell, provides and manages intranet and internet facilities to the staff. The institute has its own web server to disseminate information on research and other activities. The Economics, Statistics and Extension 